Okay, hey guys, um, this is now going to be, I guess, the third for chapter 9, and I'm talking about uh, structures called chromosomes. Chromosome. And um, basically, we've heard this term before and we've been talking about important in cell, in the cell cycle, and cell, cellular life. Um, and basically, it's um, a chromosome is tightly packed. Tightly packed. I realize when I press too hard on this, it doesn't write. Uh, tight, tightly packed uh, DNA strands or DNA double helices. So it's not actually. It's not essential. It's not like a, a vesicle that carries the DNA. It's just DNA wound really tightly around around histones and proteins and whatnot. So. If you can imagine our first, um, my first, oops, I don't know what I was trying to draw there. One second. Uh, the first image of kind of a, a DNA double helix, something like that. Um, if you were to take the end here, the base pairs, you know, the ATGC nitrogenous bases, just want to make it accurate. Okay, um, so that that's what a, a DNA, uh, a, a little segment of DNA would look like inside of our body or inside of an animal's body, and really, if you were to take the the, the DNA double helices in our cells and, and completely unwind them to their full length, they'd be about six feet, or, or um, and that's that's too long to keep in each one of our cells, and so. Chromosomes offer a way to tightly condense this, and it, it says about a thousand fold shorter than it would have been. So, so a thousand fold, that's, you know, divide six feet by a thousand, that's, that's crazy small, right? So, basically, if you, if you um, were to kind of picture this, you could look at the picture on, on page um, 149 of the book. It's a really good visual of DNA wrapping around histones. But basically, histones are these little beads. Um, they're like protein beads. They kind of look like that, and um, and they offer a place for this DNA to wrap around. So, let's say if these six histone beads, you know, kind of think of the DNA wrapping around the histone beads, each one of them, right? Kind of like that. That's a single strand, and then another strand, that maybe looks like this, and the DNA is still connected to itself. It still has, holds the hydrogen bonds. But it just condensed this. It completely condensed from that to that. And it doesn't look the same. I use different colors, and that's definitely not a thousand fold. It's about a half half the size. But um, you get the point. It condenses it a, a greatly. It really does. And then you'll see. Um, so chromosomes also have. So these histones are proteins. These these beads and proteins basically do everything in the cell. So it makes sense that they would you know be strong enough to hold this DNA down and and compress it and what's interesting is that um, sometimes when that when that when the cell or the organism needs to read a section or a gene of its DNA the histones will actually kind of come apart and loosen up and the DNA will kind of you know separate out like this and allow the, the organism to read its DNA so that's pretty interesting and now they also have um, I don't know why I drew that line there I was gonna do another section but they also have a, another form of protein in the chromosome which is this scaffold along the side, scaffold or, or support beam almost. I think of it as kind of a beam that holds it together. It's kind of like a support unit, support proteins that kind of line the outside. Um, and this just kind of all looks like a jumble. So you may be wondering what a chromosome actually looks like. And we've all seen those, those pictures that, you know, kind of depict a, a chromosome like that or, or something or other, um, something like that. But there's, there's a little misconception there, at least misconception for me when I was originally learning this. I was really confused about the difference between that, a single, a single strand right there, and that. What's the difference when you have a single strand? Uh, which one's the chromosome? Is the single strand the chromosome? Or is the double combined the chromosome? Well, the answer is pretty simple. But you'd also think that the biologist who came up with this could have thought of a better way to, to name it. The nomenclature is a little off. But technically, they're both, they're both chromosomes. So before the, the um, when we get into mitosis, we'll talk about the G1, S, and the G2 phases. 
but that's all an interface. That's before mitosis at all. The cell's not dividing or anything. Uh, cell hasn't div divided at all. But in the S phase, um, the DNA replicates itself, or the chromosomes replicate itself. So it's called chromosome replication. And basically, in um, you know, in G1 phase, the cell has uh, let's say um, the, the, this organism happens 2n, where 2n equals two chromosomes, okay? Um, the nucleus, if that's the nucleus, would look like this. You'd have one chromosome there and one chromosome there. It's kind of individual, individual chromosomes. There are these individual strands. That's in the G1. If we move to the S phase, I'm not going to give an overview of mitosis. This is interphase. Keep that in your brain that this is interphase, not mitosis. I'm just trying to give you a little overview of the, the differentiation. In the S phase, when they replicate, each one of these, I should have drawn this one in another color, um, this, this yellow one is from your dad, and this red one's from your mom, or vice versa. And if you look at it in S1 phase, or in S phase, and there's only one S, um, what happens is each one of these makes an exact copy of itself, and they connect together, and they make the, that, that X you're, you're so familiar with, right? So now we have those two Xs. And here, in G1 phase, we were 2N, because we had two chromosomes. Each one of these is a chromosome. And in S, we're still 2N. Each one of these is still a chromosome. And this is I, this blew my mind. It's like, well, each one replicated themselves, so shouldn't it be shouldn't it be four n? Shouldn't it be twice two n? Shouldn't it be two times two n? Well, no, because now what happens is each one of these um, subunits that composes the X, it's it's called a um, a sister chromatid, right? And these these blue things right here, those blue dots, very small. Um, are called the centromeres, and that's where the, the sister chromatids attach. They're attached to the centromeres. So now you still have two chromosomes. And you may be thinking, well, what's the point of going from 2n to 2n? You're just making, it seems like you're just making more things and you're not getting anywhere. Well, it's important when you go to mitosis because eventually these sister chromatids get pulled, pulled apart again into their individual uh, little subunits here, and then you can think of it going all the way back from S all the way back to G1. And G1, we're still at 2N. So really, it's very convenient because now you've made another 2N cell. You've gone from a 2N cell to a 2N cell. And I think that's really interesting. It's confusing, but it's interesting. So something to realize, when they're together, after replication, after replication, these X's are called chromosomes, and the individual, individual um, parts are called sister chromatids. Before replication, each individual part is a chromosome. Confusing, but intuitive and um, fascinating. So let's um, zoom in on a chromosome um, and get a better, better look Oops. Uh, at the important parts of a chromosome. So let's say, let's, let, let me draw it uh, after replication. So if you can kind of imagine what that will look like after replication we have uh, this kind of looks like this okay um, should look like this and I'm gonna make them a little thick just for the oh that is too thick okay not the most beautiful drawing, but that's okay. You get the point. Um, so the two, there's two important parts of a chromosome. Obviously, all in here, it's contain, it contains our DNA, all tightly packed around these histones, and so it, can, it, it contains the genes and the genetic information. But at the tip up here, the tips are um, little uh, subunits called um, telomeres, and every chromosome has telomeres, or telomeres. And uh, it literally means end body. Um, and the telomeres serve two functions. Telomere. Um, so it, uh, the first thing it does, or let me just give you a little definition. The telomere is basically a sequence um, of a sequence of base pairs that is identical to the one at the other end. So this green sequence, um, let's say maybe, I'm sure it's longer than this. I am positive it's longer than this, but let's say the sequence is ATG up here. Um, that would mean that the sequence is ATG down here. And 
I'm not sure why that's important, but I do know that it prevents against um, DNA repair enzymes. Um, DNA repair enzymes are proteins. They um, often will remove parts of the DNA if these, if these um, telomeres aren't present, so it offers protection against that. And then it also um, prevents um, re uh, reconnection. So it, pre it prevents um, two ends to connect to each other, forming essentially something that looks like a, a prokaryotic chromosome, right? Um, a, a circle. So it, it prevents against that. And again, that's uh, probably a little more advanced to know why it does that, but it, you should know that it does that. And then we have this structure in the center, or this, this point at the center called the centromere. And um, that's pretty easy. If we look at... Um, Mere, that means body. So telo is end and centro is center. So end body, center body. I like to think of it that way. And the centromere also serves two purposes. The first one being, um, it, it, if we look at this, this is after replication, post replication, right? Um, that means that uh, it's, it's already replicated. So this is also a chromosome. And each sister chromatid here is held together at the centromere. So holds holds together um, chromatids right? Um, after replication, important to notice. And, um, and the, its second function is actually when we get into mitosis, when um, these are actually pulled apart, these chromatids are pulled apart by, um, by um, uh, blanking on it, uh, microtubules. Microtubules. Um, they're pulled apart by mic microtubules and spin spindle fibers. Uh, I'll have to check the book, um, and you should too. Um, but I think it's microtubules and spindle fibers pull these apart. Um, the uh, this provides the the centromere provides the attachment point for the microtubules. So pretty easy. That's basically the breakdown of the two main parts. And uh, I have about two and a half, two minutes and forty five left. So. Um, I'm just going to talk about, I, I talked about the maintaining the, the 2N, um, and then uh, talk about the um, autosomes versus sex chromosomes. So, um, humans are uh, humans, um, when we're in our 2N phase, or our 2N, mo most of the time our cells are in 2N for, for most of their life, when we're in 2N, we have uh, 46 chromosomes. And that means that um, if you look at a karyotype, um, meaning a, a, a picture or a layout of all the, the chromosomes that we have, or the pairs of chromosomes, you'll see 22 of these, right? You have 1, 2, 3, uh, four, etc., and it just goes on to 22, and then you get to the X, Ys, and so it it actually I I believe it goes sequentially. Um, one is is the largest chromosome with the most genetic information, and I believe it goes down from there because Y is actually the smallest, and it contains the least genetic information. And um, you can actually see that it's physically the smallest if you look at a karyotype. It's very small compared to X and the others, but um, if you see, there's 22 pairs of autosomes. Pairs of autosomes, which means that there's 44 autosomal chromosomes. Chromosomes, right? And then you're saying, well, where are the other two? Where's the other pair? And that's found in the sex chromosomes. Sex chromosomes. And th those two chromosomes are X and Y. And they're, they're called X and Y chromosomes. I, th the X chromosome looks like an X and the Y just is kind of a subsection of an X. So it kind of looks like a Y, I guess, but it's just small, smaller. And um, if you were um, a, a nice, an easy way, um, if you're looking at a karyotype, to decipher whether the 
the organism or the, the, um, the human was a male or female would be looking at the sex chromosomes, the 23rd pair down there. It's the last pair. If it's XY, like this organism, this uh, faux organism I've drawn here, it would be a male. And if it's um, X, X, it would be a female. There are, there are special t um, dif uh, differentiations there that um, I believe there are some, some, there's some leeway um, and mutations and, and etc. But I'm going to talk about the next video. Um, the one thing, uh, this video is getting kind of long, but the last topic I wanted to talk about is haploid versus diploid. Um, so when a cell is haploid, I like to think of the word half. Haploid, half, okay? And diploid, I, I think of di, or diploid, diploid meaning, um, uh, it would mean two, um, but it's better to think of it as full or total. Um, and that's uh, this being n, this being 2n. 2n is just the, um, the variable that we give to diploid because all organisms have their own um, varying amount of chromosomes so you can't give it a specific number you have to give it a variable so um, uh, in humans diploid is 46 which makes haploid 23 now haploid is only really important when we're looking at meiosis um, because there's these things called gametes in sexual reproduction um, that we'll go, go over in meiosis that are um, two um, sperm and an egg one from the female adult, one from the male adult, and um, they're NN, so if it, for a human reproduction, 23 and 23, and then um, the sperm, since it's coming from a male, uh, this, this male originally had XY, so the sperm could either have an X or a Y, let's give it an X in this case, and the egg, um, we'll get into this in, in, in inheritance, but it has to be an X, right? It has to have an X chromosome because it's coming from a female, and females only have X's. They don't have a Y. So it's interesting. When these um, two cells come together, they form a new cell, which I think this is just fascinating. They form a 2N cell called a zygote, and this is essentially a new organism. It's 2N, and then it, it, if we see here, we have an X, we have an X, and it's XX, so it's going to be a female, right? This is all inheritance. You know, look at Punnett squares and, and probability and whatnot. But um, it, we'd form a 2N zygote, and this is then, um, see, each of these are haploid, 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 and then we have diploid, right? So, very interesting. And uh, see you in the next video um, for meiosis and mitosis.